The US dollar is officially over, or at least it will be very soon if certain countries have their way. Some of the world's most powerful nations have formed an alliance with the intention of ending the reign of the US dollar and potentially removing the West from the top of the global food chain. To do this, a few world leaders are planning to create a new form of money, a plot that includes Putin and Xi Jinping, as well as leaders of Brazil and India, Narendra Modi and Jair Bolsonaro. This new money will soon be a serious threat to the US dollar and very likely become the most powerful powerful form of money on the planet. Okay, so this is very big news, news that could forever change the way that we trade globally. And to explain this, I first have to explain who the current holders of the world's most powerful currencies are. You've probably heard of the G7 before. It's a partnership of some of the world's most powerful economies and includes the US, UK, Canada, Japan, and the European Union. It was formerly called the G8, with Russia previously being a member, but went back to being called the G7 in 2014 after Russia's membership was suspended following the annexation of Crimea. The main reason for the G7 existing is to keep the power of the West at the top of the global food chain by strengthening political and economic ties between member nations, but also to help ensure their money remains the most powerful on the planet. Of the six most powerful traded currencies in the world, five of those are G7 nation currencies, with a mighty US dollar sitting at the top of the pile. For the most part, the G7 wants the US dollar to remain remain the most powerful currency on the planet. Because if the US dollar stays on top, it helps keep other G7 currencies there as well, which also maintains dominance for the West as a whole. But the stranglehold the G7 has over the economic state of our world could be about to change, and it has everything to do with BRICS. No, not these kind of BRICS, but this BRICS, B-R-I-C-S. BRICS stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, and is basically a competitor to the G7 comprising the world's biggest developing economies. Individually, the nations that make up BRICS aren't much of a threat to the West, but together, it's a much different story. Today, BRICS nations account for more than 40% of the world's population and 31.5% of the planet's total GDP. But by 2030, just eight years away, the IMF estimates that BRICS countries will collectively account for half of the world's GDP, and that's not taking into account new countries that may also join the alliance. Recent Recently, Argentina has formally applied to join BRICS. Reports suggest that Iran may also soon be doing the same, and Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and Turkey are all flirting with this membership as well. And just like it is with Captain Planet, let our powers combine. Together, BRICS dominance poses a serious threat to the West's dominance. And it seems that they know this, and their very first target to take out is the US dollar. Each year, BRICS nations hold an annual meeting to discuss the future of their collaborative partnership. At the 14th annual annual meeting in June this year, BRICS dropped a financial bomb that may seal the fate of the US dollar, and the news was delivered by this guy. Vlad himself. Putin announced that BRICS plans to create a new global reserve currency, a form of money that will become standard in Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, as well as other nations that may become a part of the alliance. The most important part of Putin's announcements are the words reserve currency, because for that to happen, it would have to kick the US dollar out of that top spot. Right now, the US dollar is considered the reserve currency of the world, simply put, meaning it's used for the vast majority of the the world's trade. Today, roughly 40% of all international trade is conducted in the US dollar, and almost all buying and selling of crude oil is made in this currency. This means that basically all nations on Earth must buy and hold US dollars. The more US dollars that need to be bought or used, the more valuable the currency becomes. And the United States is the only nation that can control the printing or destruction of this currency as well, meaning if the US needs to buy more goods from other nations, it can just print more money. And and effectively export its inflation to the rest of the world. Since the Bretton Woods Agreement of 1944, this is the incredible power the US has over the rest of the world, forcing everyone to eat out of Uncle Sam's palm. But if the US dollar were to lose its reserve currency status, it could devastate the nation, an outcome it seems that BRICS is actively trying to achieve. So how will this new money create
created by bricks work exactly? Well, I'll touch on that in just one second. But first, I just want to mention that we have a newsletter of 75,000 people that people just love. They love receiving extra financial gems into their inbox wrapped in beautifully written stories. There is a link in the bio for that. Now back to the BRICS currency. So once launched, this is probably how it would work. Hypothetically, let's call this new money BRICS bucks. According to Putin's announcement, the new currency would act like a basket containing the value of the five BRICS nation currencies, making it semi-decentralized and more stable than the US dollar. And to give the currency even more power, it's possible BRICS bucks could also be backed by gold. Since the first BRICS meeting, the five BRICS nations have been buying up gold like crazy, increasing the supply by several thousand percent per year. And this doesn't even include the recent discovery of up to 12 trillion worth of new gold in Uganda. In other words, more gold than the combined total of the world's supply today. New deposits that will almost exclusively be mined by China, meaning for the first time in half a century, we could again have a currency backed by gold, which on its own would almost instantly make it the most valuable money on earth. Now, the United States is likely pooping its pants at the idea that BRICS wants to create its own currency, specifically if this currency is backed by gold, because it would mean very bad news for the West's control over global economics. But on the other side of the coin, it would mean very good news for the economies of the BRICS nations. If a BRICS currency was created, it will give these five nations a better grip on the economic future. They could control more more of global trade and wouldn't need to buy or hold the US dollars. The economies of BRICS nations would also no longer be easily manipulated by the US government, and the US would no longer have any power over their money, and would also give BRICS nations an almost unmatched level of economic stability. For example, if the economy of the United States falls, the US dollar is weakened as a result. But with five countries combined, this wouldn't happen to a BRICS currency. For example, if the economy of Brazil would go into decline on on its own, the BRICS currency could still rely on the stability of the other four. This could make a BRICS currency much more stable than the US dollar, meaning it would become much more attractive for other countries to trade with it as well. Long story short, a BRICS currency could easily dominate the US dollar. And this is very big news. However, it's not the very first time that the power of the West's money has been threatened. And the other time actually wasn't so long ago in human memory. On the 19th of March 2011, a NATO-led coalition staged an intervention in Libya. The force was made up of several nations, but primarily was led by France and the US. According to the UN Security Council, the mission was a humanitarian one, designed to prevent another civil war breaking out in Libya, and to end alleged crimes against humanity being perpetrated by Libya's leader, Muammar Gaddafi. However, there might have been other reasons for the invasion of Libya, and as you might expect, it has everything to do with money and power. Prior to the invasion of Libya, there were rumors Gaddafi had plans to unite Africa. And according to unclassified emails released via the US State Department, he aimed to do this by creating a new African currency, a currency backed by gold called the African dinar. This new currency could have seriously threatened Europe's power in Africa. This is because at the time, and still today, over a dozen nations in Africa used the CFA franc as their currency. Called Francophone countries, these nations are former colonies of the French Empire. And the CFA franc is pegged to the euro. It gives Europe significant economic control over the nations that use it. Also, the countries that use it must also hold significant deposits with the French treasury. If Gaddafi was successful in uniting Africa under the gold dinar, it would have weakened the power of the euro and also diminished Europe's economic control of the region. And according to the leaked emails, this is exactly what French President Nicolas Sarkozy feared. Allegedly, Sarkozy had five main aims of invading Libya. These all revolved around keeping a steady flow of oil going to France and maintaining Europe's power in Africa. Sarkozy's decision to overthrow Gaddafi was also heavily influenced by how much gold Libya held. None of these reasons match up to the public story that the invasion happened for humanitarian reasons. In the end, Libya Libya's government was toppled by NATO forces, resulting in the eventual execution of Gaddafi himself. More than anything, I think this just shows how important the power of currency is and what some nations are willing to do in order to keep their place on the global currency hierarchy. And it also illustrates why a currency designed to threaten the power of the G7 nations is such a big deal. So what can we learn from this whole BRICS situation? Well, to me, this is a lesson in stability and 
diversification. A BRICS currency would likely become one of the most stable currencies on Earth, especially if it's backed by gold. And its power would also come from the fact that it would be diversified over economies of several nations instead of just one. Now, we might individually not have the power of nations, but we can all learn from the steps BRICS is taking, like diversifying our investments or making them more stable. For example, by investing our cash across multiple different currencies or many stable asset classes and staying away from more risky bets that may put our investments at risk. And for increased stability, you can also do what BRICS does and what I do as well by investing a portion of your portfolio into gold, one of the most stable forms of money that has ever existed. And maybe a final lesson. If the BRICS currency does become available, perhaps it might be a good investment, something to research further into, just like I'll be researching for myself to find out the nitty gritty about it and decide if I want to put my investment there as well. If you enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy the recent video we made about how a lot of the US dollar's power is tied to oil as well. Click on your screen now to watch. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, we have that amazing newsletter that people just love. You don't want to miss out. Link in bio for that. Also, subscribe and comment. We would love to have you part of the community. And finally, we have an epic private membership where people are learning more about the joys of finance and freedom in their own life. Link in bio for that. And I will see you in the next one.